Famous musicians, Oscar-winning actors, legendary sports figures, and even war heroes all have one thing in common. It all must come to an end. I'm your host, Ed Doyle, and these are stories of fame and fate. The 70s produced dozens of extremely talented rock bands, many of them coming from England, taking America by storm. And among some of the top grossing bands of the era, with a double platinum album, eight gold records, the band Foghat became one of the greatest performing bands of the 70s, with songs such as Slow Ride, Fool for the City, which is still played to this day, almost 50 years later. This is the tale of the fame and fate of lead singer, Lonesome Dave Preverett. David Jack Peverett, son to Jack and Doris, was born on April 16, 1943, in the Dulwich village of London, England. Growing up in London, Dave began to discover his love for music. At age nine, his father brought him his first guitar, and he became a passionate fan for artists such as Chuck Berry and Little Richard. In his teens, Dave was a member of various bands, such as the club band, which was known as the Nocturnes. Later, he went with the Cross Ties Blues Band, where Dave met Chris Yolden, who, with Chris, Dave would eventually join the band Savoy Brown in 1967. One of the first songs that Dave began to sing lead on for the band was called Louisiana Blues, which became a favorite of Savoy Brown fans. Dave took on the nickname Lonesome Dave as he became the lead vocalist for the band with one of what many consider one of the greatest albums that featured Dave as lead vocals titled Looking In. In 1970, just months after the release of the album Looking In, Lonesome Dave, bassist Tony Stevens, and drummer Roger Earl left Savoy Brown to form a band of their own. Joining them was guitarist Rod Price from the band Black Cat Bones. With Dave's new band's first album being recorded, the artwork being all done and ready for release, the band members still didn't like the name of the band, which at that moment was called Brandywine. Dave had said it sounded more like a Kingston Trio kind of band. So Dave, drawing on the memory of a silly word, Foghat, that he came up with as a child while playing a word game with his brother John, drew out a scribble of a little guy with a hat, undoubtedly of what Dave's imaginary friend and playmate Junior Foghat may have looked like. And the band looked and agreed and said, let's go with it. From that moment on, so became the band Foghat. Foghat's first album featured the Willie Dixon song, I Just Wanna Make Love To You, which to this day still receives considerable airplay. As the band progressed and became more and more popular, they produced albums such as Rock and Roll, which went gold. They went on to release Energized, which went gold. Rock and Roll Outlaws, and Fool for the City, which went platinum. Fool for the City was the first album that was produced without Tony Stevens, who had left the band just before the recording of the album in 1975 due to the band's endless road trips and touring. Foghat's signature song, which has been used in countless movies and television spots, Slow Ride, came from that album. 
Stevens was replaced by producer Nick Jamerson for the recording of the album. The following year, Jamerson was replaced by Craig McGregor, and they released the albums Night Shift, Fog Hat Live, which went double platinum, and Stone Blue. In 1980, Rod Price left the band also due to the constant on-the-road performing of the band, and he said because the band was getting away from their original hard boogie sound and instead started to chase the new pop direction of music. And the final albums that would have Rob Price on guitar would be Boogie Motel and Tight Shoes. Foghat went on to produce the album Girls to Chat, and Boys to Bounce, with Eric Cartwright on guitar, Roger Earl on drums, Craig McGregor on bass, and Lonesome Dave on guitar and lead vocals. But the fan base of Foghat, however, was beginning to wane, as both the quality and the focus of the band's music was fading. The last album to ever be recording on the Bearsville label would be Zigzag Walk and Zigzag Walk barely even made it to the bottom of the charts. In the next few years, more of the band members would come and go, and in 1984, Dave Preverett returned to England and the band briefly disbanded. In 1990, Dave returned to the U.S. and formed his own version of the band and called it Lonesome Dave's Fog Hat. But as many of the Fog Hat fans were quoted as saying, there's only enough room in the world for one Fog Hat. So in 1993, at the strong request of producer Rick Rubin, the original members reunited briefly and produced the album Return of the Boogeyman. The original band members stayed together again for six more years until Price decided to retire from touring once and for all. And in 1998, Dave would lose a kidney to cancer. Foghat went against the grain of what everyone else was doing for the time and stuck to their hard bluesy sound, which actually made them unique and so popular in the eyes of many. And even after months of intense chemotherapy and radiation treatments for Dave's kidney cancer, his passion for his music actually put him back on the road for a short time for one final tour. On Saturday, February 5th, 2000, at the age of only 56, Lonesome Dave Preverett was taken to the hospital near his home in Orlando, Florida, diagnosed with pneumonia due to complications with his battle with kidney cancer. Dave sadly passed away on that following Monday, February 7th of 2000. So if you're ever out someday for a nice slow ride and you wish to pay your respects to Lonesome Dave Preverett of Foghat, come here to Woodlawn Cemetery in Gotha, Orange County, Florida, in Section S, right by the Big Lake, and pay your final respect to Lonesome Dave Preverett.